happy Aloha Friday to you all. My name is Chad and I play football at Northwestern and I'm coming to you from downtown Chicago. And I don't know about you guys, but lately during this quarantine, I've just been feeling stuck in a routine. And in these times, I sometimes feel like I'm just going through the motions. But life as a Christian was never meant to be routine or comfortable. In fact, following the truths in God's word should make us routinely uncomfortable in living out our calling to be an extension of God's love and share the gospel, the good news of the gift of salvation that is offered to all through Jesus Christ. And many prior speakers in this series have presented the challenge of living out this calling by reaching out and caring for those around us, or checking in on teammates who we have grown accustomed to seeing every day but are now distant. But if you're like me, and this hasn't come easy or you've faced rejection when you've tried to reach out, I want to encourage you to continue in this calling. So if you'd turn with, if you'd turn with me uh, to John, one of the four Gospels that tells of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we're going to pick things up in chapter 14. Now up until this point, Jesus has been foreshadowing his own death on the cross and has been sharing this with the disciples. And we'll pick things up starting in verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it, it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own authority, but the Lord who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So first off, we see here in verse 11 that Christ and God are united in power and love when Jesus says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And with that knowledge, we read in verse 12, as Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now, this is crazy. Jesus is literally saying that his followers will not only reflect him in doing similar works as him, but they will do even greater works than he did in his time on earth for God's kingdom. And what he means by this is a greater worldwide scope of seeing people and nations transformed by the gospel. Now you may be asking, how? How could God use someone like me to do greater works than Jesus? But in the verses that follow this passage, we see that this is not the result of our own efforts. For God provides a helper, the Holy Spirit in us, to empower us as a body of believers to do these works. And not only that, but in verses 13 to 14, we also learn that there is a power in prayer. But I do want to make clear um, that these verses are not saying that when we pray in Jesus' name, that he will give us everything we ask for in life. However, in verse 13 when it says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I think what it's really saying here is that praying in Jesus' name means praying in a way that is consistent with his character and his will, which has been revealed to us in God's word. And as we do this when we pray, we can know that ultimately God will be glorified. And in knowing God's character as one who is all-knowing, good, faithful, just, and compassionate, we can be assured that his answer to our prayers that first bring him glory will also be for our good, regardless of the outcome. And so as we pray for the Holy Spirit to empower us in this calling to share the gospel, we can do so with a humility before God and realizing that he will work things out by his sovereignty. And that is so freeing, knowing that the outcome is completely in God's hands. And so today I want to challenge you, if you don't know about this good news, feel free to message me or ask the person who shared this video with you, as I'm sure we'd all love to talk more with you about it. And if you have chosen to follow Christ, as you think about the people in your life who need Christ or who you desire to be a loving witness to, be encouraged that you are empowered by the Holy Spirit and connected to a God through prayer who works all things out for our good and His glory. Aloha.